Welcome to Art History with Jackie. Today, we will be talking about Georgia O'Keeffe, an American painter known for her enlarged flowers and New Mexico landscapes. O'Keeffe has been dubbed the mother of American modernism. Georgia O'Keeffe was born on November 15, 1887 in a farmhouse in Wisconsin. Her parents were both dairy farmers. She was the second of seven children. By 10, she had decided that she wanted to be an artist, and she began to receive art instruction from local watercolorist Sarah Mann. She went on to study art at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago from 1905 to 1906. In 1907, she attended the Arts Student League in New York, and in 1908, she won the league's William Merritt Chase Still Life Prize for her oil painting, Dead Rabbit with Copper Pot. While in the city, she met Alfred Stieglitz, a gallery owner who later became her husband. In 1908, she took a job as a commercial artist in Chicago. Family and personal illness kept her O'Keefe from pursuing a fine art career further. She began teaching art in 1911. She took a summer art class in 1912 in Virginia, where she was first exposed to avant-garde and abstract styles. It was at this point that she began to experiment with abstract compositions and develop a personal style that veered away from realism. In 1915, she created a series of highly innovative charcoal abstractions based on her personal sensations. She mailed them to a friend in New York who showed them to gallerist Alfred Stieglitz. He called them the purest, finest, sincerest things that had entered his gallery in a while. He exhibited these drawings that year. Stieglitz encouraged O'Keeffe to move away from the watercolors she favored because the medium was typically associated with amateur female artists. Stieglitz, 24 years older than O'Keeffe, provided financial support and arranged for a residence and place for her to paint in New York in 1918. He was technically married, but eventually he moved in with O'Keeffe. He promoted her work and they began a relationship. Also around this time, O'Keeffe became sick during the 1918 flu pandemic. O'Keeffe began creating simplified images of natural things, such as leaves, flowers, and rocks. Most famous for her depiction of flowers, O'Keeffe made about 200 of her signature paintings, which by the mid-1920s were large-scale depictions of flowers as if seen through a magnifying lens. By the late 20s, O'Keeffe was recognized as a prominent American artist in her own right. In 1929, O'Keeffe traveled to New Mexico with her friend Rebecca Strand. There, she painted the Taos Mountains and the New Mexico landscape. She went on many pack trips, exploring the rugged mountains and deserts of the region. After this trip, O'Keeffe began spending nearly every year working in New Mexico. She would collect rocks and bones and made them subjects in her work. Known as a bit of a loner, O'Keeffe explored the land alone in her Ford Model A. O'Keeffe did not work from late 1932 until the mid-1930s as she sh suffered from several nervous breakdowns and was admitted to a psychiatric hospital. These breakdowns were the result of her learning of her husband's affair. When she was 51 and her career seemed to be stalling, she was commissioned to create two pieces for the Hawaiian Pineapple Company to use in advertising. She visited Hawaii and spent her time there painting flowers, landscapes, and traditional Hawaiian fish hooks. While she painted several native Hawaiian natural forms, she did not paint the pineapple that was requested of her until the Hawaiian Pineapple Company sent a plant to her New York studio. During the 1940s, O'Keeffe had two one-woman retrospectives, the first at the Art Institute of Chicago and the second at the MoMA. She became the first woman artist to have a retrospective at the museum. In 1945, O'Keeffe bought a second house, an abandoned hacienda in New Mexico, which she converted into a home and studio. In the summer of 1946, her husband passed away from a cerebral thrombosis. She moved permanently to New Mexico in 1949 after working for three years to settle his estate. In her later years, she hired a 27-year-old potter named John Bruce Hamilton, who lived with her as her assistant and then as a caretaker. He helped her write her autobiography. O'Keefe passed away in 1986 at the age of 98. Her will was contested because she left most of her estate to Hamilton. This case has become famous as a precedent in estate planning. O'Keefe was a legend, known for her independent spirit and dramatic works of art. She was audacious and unique and an icon of American modernism. Thank you and see you next week.